All right, so today we want to talk about solving from vertex form. So we know about solving using factoring, um, but that's pretty much all we know. Now, in case something, uh, in case we can't factor something or something's in vertex form, in which case we'd have to expand and simplify it and then factor it, <laughs> we, want, we want to try to get a different approach. So. Let's look at an example. I'll start with a word problem. So rocket flight is modeled by this equation. So the height of the rocket is negative 5 times t minus 3 squared plus 45. And we'd have something like the height is the meters and the t is seconds. So I want to know when will it hit the ground. Well, for it to hit the ground, I know that h has to be 0. Because height is zero means it's hitting the ground. So we'll set up that equation. Zero is equal to all that stuff. Now, you see how we could potentially factor, but that would be kind of crazy because we'd have to expand, simplify, and then try to factor. So instead, we can just try to isolate t because the reason why we had to factor before is because we had a t squared and a t. Right now, we just have a t with a lot of stuff around it. So we can try to isolate that. So in order to isolate it, we can try to get rid of that 45 by subtracting 45 from both sides. Then the next thing we can probably try to do is get rid of that negative 5. All right? So the negative 5, we're going to divide both sides by negative 5. And now we have to get rid of that square. And the opposite of squaring is square rooting. So we'll square root both sides. And the square root and the square cancel out, because square roots and squares are opposite of each other. And the square root of 9 on the left side is 3. So we end up with 3 is equal to t minus 3. Now, there's a slight problem. You need to think to yourself, is this the only thing that we could square to get 9? Is 3 the only possible thing that we can square to, square to get 9? I know a lot of us are thinking yes, but the answer is actually no. So to square 3 to get 9, that's true. But what if we were to square negative 3? What's negative 3 squared? It's still 9, right? So that means that we get an or. Negative 3 is t minus 3. And it makes sense that we have two answers, because with factoring, oftentimes we had two answers. So that's okay. All right, so we've got our two answers. Now let's see what we need to do with them in order to finish this off. So we have these two answers. And just for notation's sake, in math, we want to write this as plus or minus 3. So this thing right here is called a plus minus sign. Okay, so that's plus minus 3. And one of the situations is that it's positive 3, so now we need to solve 3 is equal to t minus 3. We add 3 to both sides to get rid of that minus 3, and we get t is equal to 6. On the other hand, we get negative 3 is t minus 3, and we need to add 3 to both sides to get rid of that minus 3, and we get 0 is equal to t. So there's our two answers. And we get that the rocket is on the ground at 0 and 6 seconds. Okay? All right. So um, let's look at one more example. So what if we had just simply uh, 5x minus 2 squared uh, is equal to negative 10? And we want to solve this. Well, we divide both sides by 5, and we get x minus 2 squared is equal to negative 2. And now we want to square root both sides, but we can't square root negative numbers. Right? So that means that this has no solution. Okay? So it's okay to get no answer. That just means that our parabola has no x-intercepts, and that's okay. We've seen that before, too. So what about one more? What if we wanted to solve 5 
x minus 2 squared is equal to positive 10. All right? Well, now we can divide by 5 because we need to get rid of that 5 first. We get x minus 2 squared is equal to 2. Now we take the square root of both sides. And what happens is we get x minus 2 is equal to, and the square root of 2 is not a nice number. It's a decimal. And that's okay, too. It's 1.41. As long as we remember that it's not just 1.41, it could be plus or minus 1.41. So now to solve, that gives us our two situations. It gives us that x minus 2 could be 1.41. And we can add 2 to both sides and get x is 3.41. Or we can get x minus 2 is equal to negative 1.41. And again, we add 2 to both sides, and we get x is equal to 0 0.59. So we get our two solutions, which is OK. All right, so we can have situations where we have two solutions. We can have situations where we can have no solutions. And that is solving by vertex form.